Okay, we are live. Okay. Hi, morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today we are here for a live session on a very special uh, day, which is uh, World No Tobacco Day. And with us, we have our esteemed speaker, Professor Dato Dr. Haji Abdul Razak Mutalif. Uh, he is our senior consultant chest physician, head of school, clinical sciences, faculty of medicine, bioscience and nursing of Massa University. So without further ado, I shall pass uh, the screen to Prof. Razak uh, as he takes on this year's theme, which is tobacco exposed. Prof, all yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, and uh, must thank Masa for inviting me to give this uh, talk this morning. Eh? I think I must say thanks to Masa for having this initiative to start on this uh, World Tobacco Day, which I think is very important because it targets everyone in the community and especially those in the universities. Eh? We have a lot of young people in the university and uh, they are all uh, doing a lot of activities there and we don't want them to do something which is not really good for them in the, in the future. Uh, my topic this morning basically will be on a few main topics. Uh, the first thing is I want to talk about the history of tobacco. It's very important. Then I talk about epidemics of tobacco in the world and also in Malaysia. And I'll talk about the effects of tobacco and finally the theme. I think the theme this year is very, very interesting. The history of tobacco is very interesting. Uh, uh, they always, this can be a joke, but this can be true. Uh, they always believe that the Spanish went to South America in 1492. Uh, when they went to South America, they found the aborigines that the Aztec people, they were smoking a kind of uh, a tobacco leaf with a, with a very kind of funny kind of bamboo. And the bamboo is called tabak. No? And from that word tabak, that's where they got to use the word tobacco. So what they believe is that the Spanish went to South America, they brought the tobacco or tabac to the European countries, Spain then. And then from the Spain, the whole thing became much, much more what they call uh, established. And again, they found that uh, the first person to smoke in Europe was a French person. Interesting. The Spanish brought it, the French guy went to Spain and then took the tobacco and he smoked. And this French guy's name is Nicot. So nicot became nicotine. So that's how it actually started. Again, the joke is that when the Spanish went to South America, they say that the Spanish gave them syphilis and brought back tobacco for exchange. It can be a joke, it can be true. But I think it's very true. So the Spanish brought it to the Europe, and then from Europe, it went to the whole world. So in the early 1800s, the tobacco was something very luxurious. Only people who are rich. People can afford to buy the cigarettes, they smoke. So they got very high class clubs for people who are rich to smoke uh, cigarettes in uh, in their pubs or in their clubs. You know? So only rich people can smoke tobacco then. And then slowly over the years, in the late 1800s, that's when tobacco became much, much more cheaper because they were producing in a very, very uh, large number of tobaccos. You know? From few hundreds, they went to few billions of tobacco uh, production in the late 1800s. And then it became very cheap. When it became very cheap, everyone can buy tobacco then. So from something luxurious, something expensive, it became something very cheap and something very affordable. And everyone smokes cigarette nowadays. And because of that, we are having a big, big issue right now. Right now in the world, we have 8 million people dying of tobacco disease. 8 million people in a year. And out of 8 million people, about 1.2 million people die are the second-hand smokers. The wives or the children, the house the people smoking. And all these deaths are due to direct cause of this tobacco smoking. How do they kill these people? I'll come there later in my third uh, section. And let's, let's go towards uh, what they call the, the figure in the, in the world epidemics. Huh? Um, WHO came out data just a few days ago. Huh? It came out in the, in the internet. You can just Google WHO smoking. You get all data nicely over there. Uh, what they found is that uh, the highest number of people who smoke in the world are the poor people. They call it low middle income countries, LMIC. So 80% of smokers in the world are actually found in the poor countries. So when the poor people smoke cigarettes, they waste lots of money in this buying these cigarettes. 
and when they get sick, they really get sick. They can't get money for their family and everything. So the effect is really tremendous for the young, the, what the poor people in the in the world. And surprisingly, uh, I can say this because it came out in the WHO website. The highest country, with, sorry, the high, the highest number of smokers in the world is Indonesia. Eighty some percent of Indonesians smoke over there. That, that's really very very high. You know? So when they smoke a lot over there, uh, that, that's why the figure is very high, eighty some percent. Again, the regions around our country, uh, you can say China. China about sixty percent smoke in China. How about Malaysia? Malaysia at one time ten years ago. In the year 2000, if you surprise, every two person in Malaysia, one person smoke. That means in 20 in the year 2000, 31 percent of Malaysian adult Malaysian males smoke in the country. But that, that is a lot. That's a lot. So about 10 years ago, so 20 years ago, so 41 percent smoke in the country in Malaysia. And over the past few years, with a lot of work done with the KKM, KKM is this something very aggressive. Our Ministry of Health is really very pro quit smoking thing in the, in the country. We did lots of activities to bring the smoking down in the country. You know? I can mention some later towards the end. So with all the activities by the KKM and also by the public and by a lot of NGOs and other societies, from 51% of smoking in the country it came down now to 40% now. So it is really very really good, but still not very good yet. So most developed countries only about 70% smoke. Less than twenty percent, so Malaysia double the, uh, the other countries. You know? so about forty percent Malaysian smoke over here. So smoking again is still a big issue in our country, in Malaysia. Who smokes in Malaysia the highest? I'm sorry, this is the figures by the KKM. Twenty percent are the Malays, fourteen percent are the Chinese, and about eight percent are the Indians. We can be because of the population, eh? because more Malays in the country, so they might definitely they smoke more. So you can't say anything else on that. So a lot of people smoke in the country. We waste a lot of money in buying the cigarettes, and uh, this is really a lot. A study done by one doctor of Junit many years ago. He found that in that particular year, 2003, uh, the government's budget for health is about eight billion ringgit. Example, okay, this is uh, about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So out of the eight billion ringgit for the risk, uh, sorry, for the budget of the health. About 3.7 billion is spent is spent on disease caused by the smoking. And that's a lot of money. A disease can go for lung disease. A disease can go for cancers. A disease can go for heart disease. So these three main diseases caused by the cigarette, about one third or half the budget goes to manage all these diseases. And there there should be a lot. This is all preventable death in our country. So can, can you just imagine the budget going for disease is preventable? Uh, the money can be used for many things else in the country for making our health thing much, much better than uh, the old days. Old days huh? So once again, uh, the effect is really a lot on all these smokers. Okay? The effect can be the, to the person and to the family and to the community. And the worst thing is to the country and the healthcare department, also healthcare healthcare management over there. Uh, that's so far about this relation thing. But let me come back to this new issue about the smoking thing. When you're talking about smoking, uh, we always talk about tobacco as a smoke many, many, many years ago. I told you about history because it's very, very important. Eh? You look at historically, the tobacco started as something luxurious and something difficult to get. And when it became mass production, became cheap, people can afford to buy. Right now, if you look at the American tobacco company, the Philip Morris company, they built, they can produce about 700 billion cigarettes a year, you know. Billion, not million. So this tobacco, this uh, Philip Morris can produce 700 billion cigarettes in a year. This is only one company. There's another big company in England, there's another big company in Japan. There are many companies in China and also Indonesia. So can you imagine how much they produce in a year? Billions of cigarettes in a year. And they all are targeting people in some countries I'll talk later, the younger people again in, in the world. So that is tobacco. Right now, things are changing and things are evolving. They found that cigarette sales getting down. Because we're talking about cigarette, we're talking about damage, we're talking about the effects and everything. So the company cannot sustain anymore the sale. 
because they can't sustain the sale anymore and they are not doing very well compared to before, they have to do something new right now. They came now with the e-cigarette. They came now with the heating tobacco kind of devices. So which they claim that the e-cigarette is not really damaging because it only contains nicotine. It doesn't contain the tar. So it doesn't kill the person by all the disease. It doesn't cause cancers. Same thing, heating tobacco products again, something very interesting. Again, they say that this is all good for the patient because they can still get the nicotine without the damage done by the tar in the cigarette. So we look at the cigarette uh, again, there are two components that you have to remember. The first component is called the nicotine. Gives you the addiction. So if you take a cigarette, if you smoke, the nicotine gives you the addiction. You just can't stop smoking at all. If you take one puff of this uh, cigarette, within 10 seconds, that nicotine goes to your brain. When it goes to your brain, the nicotine will simulate the pleasure center. There's a plane, that thing called dopamine there over there, and uh, that dopamine gives you all the pleasures in, in, in your in yourself. So that nicotine goes and simulates the dopamine center and it gives you all the pleasures. When you get all the pleasures by nicotine, you want more and more and more. If you tend to smoke more and more, you become addict to nicotine. And second component of cigarette is the tar. The tar is the one that you really worry about. The tar contains some the 4,000 chemicals in the tar. And out of 4,000 chemicals in the, in the tar, 70 of those chemicals can cause cancer to you. Not only cancer lung, they cause cancer anywhere in the body. You can serve the mouth, cancer in the cysts, cancer of the prostate, cancer of the uterus, cancer anywhere in the body. So one is to make you an addict, and the other will give you a disease. A very bad combination. A very bad combination. So that's why this 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 uh, new new kind of devices where they claim that we want to give the patient only nicotine without tar so they can prevent all the disease is actually is uh, is not true. It's not true. When you do something new, like say the e-cigarette, I'm sure people have, you have seen people who smoke e-cigarette. The e-cigarette got lots of smoke, lot of smoke, and where the smoke come from? From chemicals. They call it formaldehyde. And all these chemicals, when they burn, they produce lots of smoke. Of course, something that is chemical, something that is burned or something that is a vapor, that vapor will contain also chemicals found in the solution. And this, this chemical will definitely produce lots of effect to your lungs and to your body, which people do not know. And the new thing is called heating tobacco. Again, this is not a solution. They will take tobacco, they will heat it with some uh, high power kind of uh, devices. And again, they say that this is smokeless, it's not vapor, this doesn't cause damage to you. And this is how they sell the products. And to make the people get addicted to it, they put in lots of flavors. There are so many flavors now with the e-cigarette, people just fall for a nice smell and a nice taste. So I already talked about the e-cigarette, I already talked about the, the heated tobacco thing. And of course, people already ask me about Razak, what about Shisha? Shisha is also a tobacco kind of product. Some people say that Shisha is just what they call uh, the dry, dry sort of uh, skin of this, uh, these foods and everything. Yes, they put dry skin of the food, but they also put tobacco inside there to give you the, the addiction. And the worst thing about shisha is that shisha is not smoked by one person. Most of the time, you go to any pub, any bar where people smoke shisha, there'll be a group of them. Uh, 10 people or 5 people or 20 people there, they're having a nice party of shisha over there. And they'll start sharing the shisha from one person to another person. When you share shisha from person to person, you don't know what the other person has. He may be having herpes in his mouth, he may be having some influenza in his mouth. Right now, he may be having COVID in his mouth. We're not so sure. So they can also spread. So this I think people do not look at it carefully. Right? So there are a lot of things in this world going right now where people think of uh, take the things very easily, which actually is uh, not uh, taken seriously by these people. Let's come back to the Malaysia figure again. I forgot to mention to you is now. Like I say, Malaysian 40% Malaysian smoke right now, much better than before. 
And last year we did a video study on vaping. And in Malaysia, one million people vape. They're really frightening. Eh? And mostly are young people. And why do you worry about vaping? Vaping contains nicotine solution. So nicotine solution, when you vape, you get addicted to nicotine. When you get addicted to nicotine, what do you want? You want more nicotine. And this is why we say the gateway to a addiction. So we always believe that if you give someone nicotine solution, or you give someone a heated tobacco, they all got nicotine. So once they become addicted to nicotine, they want more and more and more nicotine. What they go for? They go for cigarettes. And the same company, they produce cigarettes, the Philip Morris and the BTC and the Japanese companies, they are now producing e-solution they also not producing the heated tobacco because they can't find cigarette anymore nowadays. So they have to keep their company running for the future. So this is how they target the younger people right now. So it is really is a different kind of world right now. Yeah? We are all living in a different kind of world. We got a lot of things developing. So do they develop to suit the, the environment. Okay? And uh, what did they find about second and smoke in Malaysia? This is again the future of Malaysia. 30% of Malaysian smokers smoke in the house. This study done last year in a, in a survey. So if somebody smokes in Malaysia, like I say, 40% of Malaysian adult Malaysian smoke. I forgot to mention about the girls. Eh? The girls are good in Malaysia. The Malaysian girls are very good because only about less than 3% or 2% smoke in Malaysia, the Malaysian girls. It's very good for them. I must say that they should still keep on smoking less and they should not smoke at all in the future, we ask me. So uh, Malaysian figure about the girls are very good. They are less than 3%. So if 40% of Malaysian males smoke, out of these 40%, one third of them smoke in the house. It was really very bad. And again, about 25% smoke in the working place. I've seen many of my patients come and tell me, Dr. Azak, I've got a lot of staff in my office smoking. So when I tell them, why don't you tell the boss? They don't trust my boss also smoke. So it's something very bad. No? It's something very bad. So these are these are figures. The last thing I want to take from Malaysian the smoking thing is that very good thing, like I say, Malaysian government have done lots of activity to ask people to quit smoking. Almost 50% of people who want to quit smoking who tried the quit smoking clinic in Malaysia actually succeeded. It's a, it's a very good. That's why the figure of 45% smokers about 20 years ago. Right now, we only got about 40% smokers. So we're right now down, down by 10%. Our Malaysian vision, mission for quit smoking in Malaysia is by 2045, this is KKM's mission and vision. Huh? By 2045, we don't want anyone to smoke. And those children born in 2005, they should be 15 years old right now. Huh? Those born in 2005, now 2020, now 2020. Yeah? So we are teenagers right now. We don't want any of these teenagers to start smoking. And once again, look at the figure of smoking in Malaysia. A lot of smokers, now let me just show you the figure. A lot of smokers, they start smoking when they are about 14 years of age, 10 years of age. So 30% of smokers in Malaysia right now started smoking when they are 10 years of age, 10 to 14. So a lot of smoking habit starts when it's young. So our target right now is we are really target young people. And I must say thanks to Masa again that we are targeting younger people in universities. You must tell them that smoking is really bad for you and bad in the future. Many a time when you smoke when you're young, you smoke and smoke and smoke because you do not get the effect of smoking when you're young. The effect only gets when you get older and older. After about 10, 20 years of smoking, the damage done to your lungs, which is very bad. The funny thing is that a new cigarette, the e-cigarette and the heat tobacco, the effect is seen immediately. We got a few deaths in America when they take e-cigarette. We got a few deaths also in Malaysia when they take e-cigarette. Because this e-cigarette causes chemicals. And these chemicals, when they burn, they can cause damage to your lung and they can die within a few days or within a few weeks. And some things can be irreversible. Whereas the older tobacco, when you smoke, they kill you very slowly over the years. Something very bad. Okay. My second last topic today is I want to talk about is the effect of smoking. I, I think everyone knows about effect of smoking. The smoking affects every part of the body. 
you can talk about your smell, your teeth, your coloring, and all those things. But I'm a chest physician. I'm a lung specialist. I see a lots of patients who come with lung cancer. When they come to see me in my clinic, it's only too late. When they come to my hospital, when they admit that, they already got a disease. So when they got disease, the most common disease in the lung and dangerous one is the lung cancer. 90% of lung cancer in Malaysia is due to smoking. 10% may be due to environment, your genetics, plus your, your food you eat and all those things. 90% no? due to smoking. Similarly, the smokers, again, about 60% of smokers will get a disease called COPD. COPD stands for chronic obstructive lung disease. It means if something chronic, obstructive means the airway, the place, the, the, the hole that the air goes to your lungs. The airway is, is narrowed. When it's big like this, normally they become narrow. That's why they say it's obstructive. When you can narrow, you can't breathe in, you can't breathe out the oxygen. And this disease is progressive. It's progressive and it's irreversible. So when you smoke and smoke and smoke for long, your lungs become damaged. Its damage is irreversible and it becomes progressive. And this disease will kill you slowly. I've seen many of my relatives who smoke that die miserably. I've seen many of my patients who come to the ward, they die miserably. That's the lungs. The other biggest thing you worry about is the heart. Okay? Uh, the smoking tobacco, when all these chemicals enter your body, will make your blood clot. And when you make the blood clot, the biggest vessel they can take and block is your brain. You get a stroke. You can block the vessel in the heart, you get a heart attack. You are a man, you also block the vessels down there. You will not be a man anymore. You become important. You can block the vessels in the leg. You get gangrene. So it blocks vessels everywhere in your body. So one of the most common causes of a heart attack is the smokers inside is the smoking. You know? Of course, diabetes and uh, hereditary and your know, diet and everything can cause. But smoking contributes to a lot of these heart attacks in Malaysia. I remember very well you know, when IGN first started uh, about 30 years ago. I was just a young doctor in HKL. And they were so strict in IGN those days. The Tansi or they call uh, Yahya always said that to me, Razak, refer to me a patient who don't smoke. If they smoke, I will not do any operation. Something very good, something very noble. Because when he smoke and he do a heart attack, you've got a heart attack, do a surgery for him, and he goes back to smoking, the money is all wasted. It's all wasted. And again, if you're a smoker, if you go for surgery, the healing process will take a long time. It may not be a successful surgery for you. So again, uh, it's very important. It really is very important. Of course, like I say, there are many effects of smoking in your body, but the main organs are your lung and your heart. And don't forget your brain, okay? It affects everything. Okay? And again, the cancers cannot be only the lungs. The cancer can be anywhere in the body. Okay, let me talk about the last topic of this today again. Uh, my last topic, the team. This year's team, I'm really very, very happy. I'm really happy because I've been fighting body smoking for many, many, many years. Okay, I've been working in the Ministry of Health for the past uh, 35 to almost 40 years right now. Uh, and I've been involved in this smoking thing for almost 30 years now. And we're fighting for smoking and smoking a lot all over the country. And uh, every year we come with a, with a new team. And this year's team for this uh, tobacco day is tobacco exposed. Very interesting topic, you know, the team did it this year. The basic message here for this year's team is that we want to expose the bad things the tobacco company is doing to the community. 80 million people die every year because of tobacco. So when the people die, there won't be any more smokers. What must the company do? They must create new smokers. Who are the new smokers? The young people. So they are targeting younger people nowadays to become drug addicts. In this case, drugs are the tobacco or the nicotine. Once they become addicted to nicotine, the sale of the tobacco, of the e-cigarette and the heated tobacco will all keep on increasing and they will not do so much. Like I said, they make 
billions of dollars by selling cigarettes. Billions. And the target right now is the younger people. How do they target? They make it more sexy. They make it more slim, the cigarettes. They make it more tasty for them. They got about 700 flavors of cigarettes right now in the, in the world. And they make it much more gaya, much more what they call it, presentable. And they are selling it on the point of care selling. You go to any mama shop to pay your bill, you can see cigarettes at the counter at the back. You go to someone lemon to buy something, is a cigarette at the counter at the back. So every time you go to pay a bill after you makan or go something, the cigarette there at the back there. And they're making that all this fun of sales cigarettes at the eye level of the small children and young adults. So the moment they see a cigarette, they feel like buying. So these are things that the, the big, big company is spending lots of money, lots of resources to target the younger people to become addicted. The older people already did. Okay? Eight million people died. You know? So they must get someone to replace them. This is what they say that targeting is one towards the small children. That's why the team they say is we only expose all these bad things. Bad things about the company, bad things about the cigarette, bad things about addictions. We want young people to know about these things. So what can we do? What can we do? So the first thing we did today is we had this uh, webinar about tobacco. Something great. Something great. Every person in this country has a role. I always say this thing. Eh? The Ministry of Health is just one ministry. They can't do everything to the whole community. I always tell them that when I give a lecture to anywhere in the Ministry of Health, I always tell them, I can keep on talking and talking about the tobacco pain. It's useless. Every healthcare workers must play a role. Every father must play a role. Every teacher must play a role. They have to make sure that we have to educate the younger people that it is not a good thing to do. They always start as a, as a fun. They always start as something very really interesting. But probably once they hook to this uh, nicotine, they can never get out from it. it. It's something very difficult to get out from this uh, addiction, this nicotine. So as, as a healthcare worker, as a teacher, as an administrator, whoever you are, you have a role to play. I remember when I was young, when I'm sorry, not me young, when my children are young, whenever I take them for any makan outside, they don't have to follow me. You know why? They say, Pa, you will scold somebody next to you. Yeah, I do. When I go for Makkah anywhere in a public place, if I see somebody next to me smoking with a family, I'll just tell him, please don't smoke. You're exposing a smoke to not only to your family, but also exposing the smoke to your family and to my family. I do that. I do that very often. So a few times I was almost assaulted by them. A few times became an argument, so my children felt very embarrassed. But I keep on doing it until right now. That's a rule. That's what we all can play. If you some, if you see somebody smoking in a public place right now, in fact, the Ministry of Health has come with a lot of regulations. We got a lot of regulations right now that you can't smoke here, you can't smoke there, you can't smoke within ten feet of the shop, isn't that? Which is really fantastic. About Really fantastic. So why don't we all play a role? Why don't we all play a role? If you see somebody young buying a cigarette, tell the guy you should not sell it to a young fella. It's against the law. 18 years is the upper limit. Now the government is pushing for 21. Hopefully they can go to 21. Okay. So the Ministry of Health is making smoking as a non-normal. It's not a normal thing to smoke. They mean denormalizing. So the Malaysian word for this green smoking thing is that we want to denormalize smoking as something normal in the country. But with the new things you see in the country, like the e-cigarette and the HTEP and everything, they're making smoking as a normal thing right now. They're targeting school children. They're selling near the schools. They're selling near the food markets. They're having lots of parties, giving a lot of free cigarettes. The children are all exposed. So it's something really is frightening. Okay. So I think we all have a role as a healthcare worker, as a teacher, to educate everybody that we know that smoking is something bad. 
and supporting something uh, damaging to yourself and your community. And, and as, as a Muslim, as a Muslim, uh, uh, he's already mentioned the Quran. The Quran did not mention tobacco. The Quran did not mention cigarette. But the Quran mentioned that anything that you do that damages your body, it is already a haram. Alcohol is already a haram because alcohol is mentioned in the Quran. Because those days there was alcohol there. But maybe those days there was no cigarette then. No? They didn't mention a cigarette. But it mentioned clearly that anything that you take, it damages your body. If you're killing yourself, it's already a haram. It's already mentioned. So I think 1987 is the one the health deputy minister then already mentioned that we already made record as a haram in Malaysia. Of course, you know, Malaysia a lot of different states got different kind of uh, uh, religious kind of practice. Some states follow, some they do not follow. But many at times it's something difficult to be done. Okay? So I think we should not give up the fight. We should all fight again and again and continuously to bring this thing down and to make sure that tobacco smoking is not normal, it is something damaging. So once again, the team this year is tobacco exposed. We don't want to smoke when we start smoking. So without that, thank you very much. If there's any question, I can answer the question to you. Thank you very much. I can't hear you, Jennifer. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you, Prof, for your very educational topic. Uh, it really covered a lot of aspects as on history and uh, current situation that we are facing and what um, advertisers and promotional marketing uh, collaterals are being used to lure in more smokers from the younger generation. So um, now we move on to our question and answer session. Sure. And um, we've got Tan with us. You couldn't make it at the beginning of the show because yeah. of some technical error. Uh -huh. Hi. Hello, Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Sunday marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday marketing and some technical errors to get in, uh, I suppose. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so okay, looking uh, at the that are posted here, Tan, would you like to take on? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you for the wonderful speech. Uh, here we have a question from Lingus Krishnan. Okay. The question was, uh, how useful or successful are nicotine patches and nicotine gums for patients to see smoking? Okay, what, what is your opinion? Okay, good. Thank you, much. Uh, I think. Okay, um, the Ministry of Health has a clinic called the Quiz Smoking Clinic, okay? Uh, in the Ministry of Health, the quit smoking clinic does a few things. When somebody is smoking, and when somebody wants to quit smoking, uh, they, they smoke because of nicotine, you know? and that makes them uh, get gets all the pleasure. So when you ask someone to quit smoking, they can't stop immediately because of the withdrawal effects, just like a drug addict. You know? When drug addicts want to stop this uh, morphine or whatever it is, they get all the withdrawal effects and everything. Similarly, a smoker, when they start smoking, there's no nicotine in the brain to make them all the pleasure again. They get, they get anxious, they get angry, they, get, they cannot concentrate, they can't do anything, they get a BP or short arm and whatever it is. No? So to prevent all these withdrawal effects, we got a thing called nicotine patch. The new nicotine patch gives you nicotine. And this nicotine patch actually got a dose which is actually calculated by the smoking that you smoke in a day. So they put the dose by the days and by the weeks and slowly they bring the dose down, 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 slowly until the body gets used to the withdrawal effects. And you can actually don't have the effect anymore. You can just start smoking completely. So this may take about two months, may take about three months, may even take longer than that. So the idea is that the nicotine patch will give you the nicotine in the body to prevent the withdrawal effects. That's the main thing. But I must I must warn people, you know, I'm among people that many people who want to quit smoking nicely and seriously, they go and buy it from the pharmacy. Good, you can buy. But getting a drug alone and getting a nicotine patch, sometimes they also use a nicotine gum also. Uh, it, it's not enough, you know. What they find that you just go to a pharmacy, buy a nicotine patch or nicotine gum, you take it, you you're, can be a successful, yes, maybe about 10%, maybe 20%. But if you go see a doctor, doc, doctor give you counseling. 
with a good counseling, with a good follow up, with a good what they call the advice, plus your nicotine patch, the quit smoking go up to about 50 percent. Okay, so it's very important that you can use nicotine very true, but you need counseling very, very well, very, very important. Okay. So, in other words, even with oh. the patch, you need support social support as well to very important mm -hmm. i always tell them that your family plays an important role if you're yes. a smoker you might tell you the first thing you might tell if you're married you might tell your wife uh, my dear i want to quit smoking next month so oh. when a wife knows you want to quit smoking next month she can help you you should make sure your house there's no more trace there's no mm -hmm. more smell of cigarette they give you the, the gyan you know? so it's make sure everything clean no more cigarette over there and when you smoke, she can only hit you and say, hey, see, you're so smoking, don't smoke. Huh? So there's someone in the family to look up for you, you know, that's very yeah. important. And I only tell my patient, don't go to the place where your friends smoke. Mm. And that's very important. Huh? The social thing is very important. One is, uh, okay, addiction is psychological and also mm. physiological. Two things, you know, when you take a cigarette. Psychological means you want to smoke. You know cigarette smoking is bad for you, but you still want to smoke because of the addiction over there. Yeah. Physiology means your body needs nicotine. You must get it. Okay? So yeah. you must tackle these both together. So your family comes to the play, your friends come to play, the society comes to play. And I always say the children come to play. I always tell the children play a part of the Facebook you know? If the children can tell the father, Pa, don't smoke, then the father will listen to the children more than the wife. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> okay. Yeah, that's usually the case. True. Yeah, sure. Okay, we take the second question. Yeah. yeah, hope hope that answer the question lah for the legal uh, Krishnan. And the second question is, I think everyone need to know about this as well, uh, which is, can smoking release stress? What is your opinion about that, Dr? Okay, okay. Uh, this is always a nice thing, you know. Uh, I used to work, I used to work in Tanganu for 10 years. Uh, I see lots of smokers over there, okay. Uh, all these smokers, they always tell, tell me, Dr. Say, he's a doctor, but he's a stress lah. So I only tell that uh, patient, Pachi, kalau Pachi sangat stress, kita sebagai apa sebagai pekerja kesihatan, lagi banyak stress. Tengok patient datang ke ward, sakit jantung, sakit pada perut, mati depan mata kita, lagi banyak stress. You know what I mean? Huh? So we only tell them that everybody got stress. Everyone got stress. The only thing is that you have to manage your stress by different ways. So smoking is just escaping from the stress as well. You don't want to face the stress. You do not face the stress. You don't uh, solve your stress. So, you know, it will solve it forever. So if, if, when you say that you smoke because of stress, I think it's not a good excuse. Oh, so far. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, basically, I think it's just a state of mind. You think that you're de-stressing yourself, but actually you're not. Right. Correct. The thing is, you do actually decrease the stress because, like I said, the smoking gives you the pleasure. You know? Pleasure, yeah. When you, when you smoke, the nicotine goes to your brain within 10 seconds. By mm -hmm. 10 seconds, the smoke goes to your brain. And the smoke goes to the brain that gives you the pleasure. All right. But it also and comes to the pleasure. Huh? You really love it. Okay? Yeah. You love the pleasure. No? So when you love the pleasure, you avoid the stress. You're actually escaping with the stress. Now, the stress is always still there. You know? The stress mm -hmm. is always still there, but you're just escaping from the stress. Yeah. Which so the, answer to, the, stress, no? to, the answer to Lutfi would be, can smoking really stress? It would, the answer should be, it it lets you escape your stress. Escape, yes, correct. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's escape again. Yeah. 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 yeah, your stress will just be seemed as if it's a release, but you still it have to true. face the situation, and you still need to find ways to reduce your stress factors, definitely, I suppose. Definitely. Yeah. Very important. Very yeah. important. When somebody so, quits smoking, yeah, there are a lot of good things they can take and face. No? They always find that when you start smoking, within a few minutes, you can feel that you can breathe better. Mm. Within a few months, you can feel that your lungs are improving. Within a few years, you can find that your lung cancer, your heart attack, all will come to a lesser kind of percentage. And within 10, 15 years, the chance of getting cancer is almost normal to a non-smoker. So again, the benefits are there from the few days to a few years. Huh? Because if you've been smoking for 50 years, you don't get a benefit within one or two days. No? Your yeah. body must recover the damage. No? Damage done over the 50 years of smoking. So the 50 years of smoking will slowly come back normal after a few years sometimes. No? So give them some time. No? Very good. 
Mm. But they have to keep on fighting. My, I got lots of patients who want to give up smoking. They tried 10 times, 15 times. On the 16th time, they actually succeeded. So I always mm. tell them that don't stop. It's difficult to quit smoking no? because of the addiction of the nicotine. Nicotine mm. is very addictive and to stop is really difficult. You know, they did a study very interesting. They, said they found that those people who stop within overnight is good, you know. Many people say, hey, Dr. Reza, saya dah isah rakot, dah 20 tahun dah sekarang. Saya benda tiba-tiba takut ada kesan apa-apa. So, I tell them the example that I've got a patient with a heart attack. Today they got a heart attack, mm -hmm. they say tomorrow they already stopped. Like a patient with lung cancer. Today the doctors say lung cancer, tomorrow they already stopped. So, they find that these two diseases, lung cancer and a heart attack, can make the person stop the next day. Immediately, yeah? No effect at all, no, when you stop immediately. But the only thing is mm -hmm. the effect damage already done. Yeah, and it's it irreversible, right? As you said it's earlier. Not it, but damage already done. Yes. It can prevent the future attack or future what they call like cancer, whatever it is. No? But mm -hmm. you can stop over and overnight. No? So the stop smoking always start from your mind. If you yes. decide to stop smoking, that's that's, that's the first thing. You know? We only tell the patients you must decide when you want to stop. Only you decide when you want to stop, doctor can help you. Mm. The doctor can never force you when to stop. A doctor can only give you advice. That's but true. at the end of the day, you must tell me that you want to stop next month or whatever it is. True. Okay. Yeah. Uh, done? So, uh, there is another question. I think this also we should know that from Dr. Madhumita Sen. Okay. She was asking, are there any school education programs to teach about the harm of smoking to young kids? Because nowadays, like we, we have seen a lot of young kids are also smoking. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's very good. Like I say, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Health has got a section on schooling, eh? the school health. So when nurses go to school, look for the for the health, look for the dental and everything, eh? and look for vaccinations. So the Ministry of Health is targeting small children. Like I say, our vision in Ministry of Health is that by 2045, we don't want any smokers in the country. And by those people who are born in 2015, 2005, sorry, those who are born in 2005, they should be 15 years right now, teenagers. We don't want any of these people born after 2005 to become smokers. So Ministry of Health has got a lot of school health programs telling about smoking and the damage to the school and also the school program for quit smoking. So we are doing it. We are doing it. That's, that's why I say that it is not a one person job. Everyone should play a role. The teacher should play a role. The parents should play a role. The Ministry of Health will just go to school one day in a year or two days in a year. The rest of the day, school take care of the children. The parents take care of the children. And the teachers take care of the children. So it's something continuously monitored by the father, mother, and the teachers. And the community. Of course, those people selling cigarettes must also have a responsibility. They should not sell to small children. So it, it is everybody's role, if you ask me. No need the KKM, no need the Ministry of Health. Prof, like you see now, these cigarette boxes come with very graphic images, you know, of, yeah. uh, <laughs> of the kind of condition your lungs can get become if you are an avid smoker and what can happen to uh, infants before i mean fetuses that are uh, you know by smoking mothers and stuff like that so are these images actually doing its role in preventing people from wanting to smoke or are yeah, everyone we... able to give a blind eye to it now correct the thing is that the uh... If, if you're a smoker, uh, if you see this image every day, you don't, if, there's no effect for them, you know. Huh? Yeah. But if you are a small children, if you are somebody who will start and then you see the cigarette pack with their fingers mm -hmm. over there, it can be, mm -hmm. it can make them turn off. A small children can say, Pa, why are you smoking this thing? It causes all this disease to you. Yes. So they can tell the parents, you know. So mm -hmm. the WHO and the, what do you call, a lot of bodies, they call FCTC, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they all came and say that 50% of the package must have the figure. Okay. It is a requirement. Mm -hmm. And right now, we are also going towards non, what you call, uh, empty packaging or plain packaging. Mm -hmm. Some countries in the world, like Australia, they already got this plain packaging. That means the packaging of cigarette will not have any brand over there at all. Oh, yeah. I see. 
So there is some country already started in the world, okay? Malaysia, we haven't started yet, but we're going towards it, okay? We don't want anyone to have any pick Oh, we don't tell date the Dunhill or Rotman or whatever it is, huh? Uh, we, don't want, we don't make it a print packaging, so we don't, so the people, we don't want people to go to something they like a lot. Would that uh, actually increase uh, illegal cigarettes coming into the market if you were to do the such thing? Illegal is always the issue, okay? Uh, in Malaysia, again, we got lots of issue with the e-cigarette, the illegal cigarette. You're talking mm -hmm. about illegal cigarette or e-cigarette? Illegal cigarettes, sale yeah, right. cigarettes. In Malaysia, yeah. we got lots of issue with the illegal cigarettes. No? Uh, again, mm -hmm. because it, a lot of people got to play into the thing. Yeah, custom and immigration, and then the big companies, and also these illegal fellas, and those who are selling it. You know, so everyone actually is playing a role in this illegal cigarette. The illegal cigarette is much, much, much cheaper than the normal cigarette. Yeah. So WHO found out that one the best way that people to quit smoking is to increase the tax tremendously. They found mm. if you increase the tax by ten percent, four percent will quit smoking. Very good figure, yeah. you know? Once the yeah. price of cigarette goes up by 10%, 4% mm -hmm. people in the country will squeeze because they can't afford to buy anymore. Okay. But when illegal cigarette comes into the country, they go and buy it. So this again, the government knows about this. They know this is happening. But the problem is that the government has got to do something by increasing the tax for these people. At the same time, also monitor all these illegal cigarettes coming to the country. Mm -hmm. And they found that yeah. one day, they started down here last year, they found that about 80 percent of non-malaysians smoke illegal cigarettes i want to mention who are they 80 percent mm. so they probably get it illegally from their country of origin from their countries coming in okay. yeah only about 40 percent of malaysians buy illegal cigarettes malaysians local nations about 80 percent mm -hmm. of foreigners buy illegal cigarettes so again everybody got to play a role it yeah be doing by one person you know, or one ministry yeah. it's a multi-ministry okay. involvement yeah. What is this? That's true. Uh, we've got one more that's good here. Uh, Tan, uh, I'll just put it on the screen. What is yeah. your opinion okay. regarding Indonesian critic cigarettes such as Gudang Garam and Dejarum? Do they expose a more lethal effect to smokers due to the high level of nicotine compared to the normal filtered cigarettes? Mm. Okay, I think, uh, <coughs> let me tell you something. Right? Uh, no matter what kind of cigarettes you take, it can be a rock or down or rock or crete or rock or what you call a good or any form of cigarette you take, okay, it contains tobacco. It contains tobacco. Yeah. And like what our friend Lutfi Arim said, that the content of nicotine can be high. That's why the addiction in Indonesia is very, very high. Like I say, 87% of Indonesians male smoke. It's really very high. And the cigarettes over there is very, very cheap. I went one to Jakarta for a meeting. After I came back from the prayer, Friday prayers, they were selling cigarettes in the mosque. A young boy was selling in the mosque. He in was getting mosque. it back in the box, you know, with all the cigarettes there. He was selling in the mosque. So the thing is, it's very cheap over there and easy available over there. That's why people smoke their cigarettes very easily. Like I say again, a lot of big companies are targeting the low middle income countries as the big group by the cigarettes and they make it cheap for them. So in summary, you can just say that any form of cigarette, churut ka, bidi ka, gunang gunang ka, they all contain tobacco and all the form of tobacco is actually no good for you. Okay. It can be bad or it can be very bad as well. That's right. Okay, that's good. Mm. That's right. That okay, Dato, uh, there, there is another one. I think uh, this one is related to the current outbreak that we're having like, in the world. The question was, uh, are smokers easily exposed to COVID-19 as their lung is vulnerable to COVID-19 infection? Yeah, very good. I think I was waiting for this question anyway. Huh? Uh, like, you, like you know that the, the smokers get lung disease. Okay. And whenever you smoke tobacco, the smoke, when it enters your lung, the first thing they damage is they damage the airway. The airway is where the air goes to your lungs. All this, what they call the salar of dara, they call it. No? And the airway, they got a lot of cells that protect you. And these are called macrophages. These are white blood cells. These white blood cells will kill any germs that goes to your lungs. They kill the germs immediately. So if you are a smoker, 
these white blood cells called the macrophages are no more active because the smoking already killed the white blood cells. There's no more soldiers over there to fight the germs. So any infection that can enter your body easily if you're a smoker. That's why I already say Malaysia has a lot of TB. Again, we find a lot of smokers got TB easily because the TB germ can enter your lungs also easily. Similarly, now we got these viruses, can be influenza, can be COVID-19. They can always enter your body easily, nicely, very fast if you're a smoker. And if you're a smoker, your lungs are already damaged. If your lungs are already damaged, when you've got COVID-19, it becomes more damaged easily. Mm -hmm. And chance dying is very, very high. The mortality after COVID due to a smoker is much, much higher than a non-smoker, for sure. So, so are, are, you saying, are you saying that even the young teenagers, when, when, when they are a heavy smoker, also like easily like being damaged by this? COVID-19 infection. Definitely. The thing is that, like I say, if you're young, maybe you're, you can still fight by other ways. No? The thing is that mm -hmm. the people who die because of COVID are older people. They got medical problems or they got lung disease. A young person who only smokes, maybe he's only smoking, but he got no diabetes, no hypertension, no heart disease. So the other form of thing is still healthy. So that can protect him from fighting the germs. But the thing is that they are all exposed to infection easily for sure. But the mortality is much higher in the older person who smoke with a damaged lung. Hmm? So, yeah, yeah I guess. Okay, there's one so, more. Jennifer, is there anything? Any, any, there's anyone one more else? Yeah, there's Actually, a thing. There's two the more. Best there's two uh, this this yeah. is very interesting. Huh? And like I say, like I say, uh, the cold turkey is just like a drug addict. You got a drug addict, you catch the fella, put him in the jail, don't give any drugs, and let him have a few days of all this cold turkey thing, and then after he come back to normal. Like yeah. I say, smoking cigarette, you can also do the same thing. Like I say, it's all up to you. So if you are a smoker, you got a heart attack today, tomorrow you start smoking. That's cold turkey. That's cold turkey. Huh? Like I say, it's all a willpower, okay? But then it can be difficult to many people. So when it becomes difficult, many people to start smoking. That's where the people need a help to do the withdrawal symptoms. Okay, we give them nicotine patch, we give them counseling to go away the nicotine the withdrawal effects and everything. Huh? So if you can do with the cold turkey, well and good. If you can't do it, then you come and see a doctor for counseling. Gradually, you can cut down your smoking. It's also very good. Suppose say I smoke. Suppose not me. Suppose somebody smokes say twenty cigars a day. I already tell them my patients, cut down to 15 for two weeks, cut down to 10 for two weeks, cut down to five or two weeks. Then after that, you can actually take it off slowly. This is one way. So it all depends on your mindset. You know? If you're a strong-minded person, you can say, I'm start smoking tomorrow, good, finish. If you're not a strong-minded person, you need some time to quit smoking, then you put a target date. You already tell them that, okay, FOSA is coming next month. Let me fast, let me quit smoking during the FOSA month. If for some money, you can't smoke for 12 hours. So slowly, you can actually get it over there. You know? So you can put a target there in which slowly in many ways. Like I say, there are many ways of quit smoking. Okay? Not every way is good for every person. We always ask a person to choose whichever way is good for you. If one way fails, there's the other way. Hmm? So we got many patients that tried 10 times, 15 times, and the last time they tried, they just succeeded. Okay? So it's difficult to say. Hmm? Yeah, there was once uh, a campaign that was going on on radio saying that if you do anything for 21 days repeatedly, it becomes a habit, according yeah, to yeah. studies. So um, do you think it is possible for someone to say, okay, I'm going to try to not smoke for 21 days and eventually it becomes a habit? I yeah, guess sure. like what you said, the willpower, right? If you decide... The willpower, right? Like I said, willpower is something good, but not many people can take control of willpower. That's why they need the help. Huh? So we are always there to help them. You know? Like I say, Minister of Health has got lots of quit smoking clinic. Yes. So they can just get the appointment there to help them quit smoking over there. Huh? Lucknis Anna Malay has a very good question here. Yeah. They have a fear of gaining weight after they quit smoking. What's the best <laughs> advice to give to patients? Okay. If they are this, this, this is very true, you know. In America, a lot of people sell cigarettes with one point. They say that girls will look pretty and slim when they smoke which is very true. 
So oh. if the girl smoke, if the girl actually want to cut down the weight, smoking decreases the appetite. So most smokers you can see, they actually look slim and nice and pretty. I'm talking about the girls. Eh? So they target the girl sometimes. So when they target the girl sometimes, then the girl when they smoke, they eat less and then the metabolic rate goes very high and they become thin and they look slim and beautiful. You know? uh, but the moment they start smoking, the appetite comes back. If the appetite comes mm -hmm. back, they tend to put on weight. So we always tell them putting on weight is a side effect of quitting smoking. We must warn them. We must warn them, otherwise they get, uh, they get very angry with us. We always tell them that you definitely put on weight because you get back the appetite, you keep smoking. Please go for some exercise. Or please come to a diet. Mm -hmm. So we have to tell them, yeah, this is very true. This is very, very true. But we must warn them, preempt that you put on weight, please come to a diet. Go for exercise when you quit smoking. Don't take medicine to cut down your weight now, please. Eh? <laughs> I already tell them, right. weight, I already tell them cutting down weight actually is something very cheap, you know, which is very free. Don't need a lot. Do some exercise. That's all, you know. If you want to go for a special kind of exercise, a special kind of medication, whatever it is, you know? we only tell them you are what you eat. That's all. You know? well, what? Yes. Right. There's so one from Queen Michelle. Reduce, okay, this is very interesting. Uh, very interesting. Now, this is very, Mr. Ku, uh, Ku Michelle. Uh, this is it, Ku. Okay. So, very interesting. They found that lung cancers many, many years ago, they found the cancers are called small cell cancer or squamous cell cancer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these are cancer they found that uh, due to smoking, you know, they find the cancers. And then when the people saying that the cancer, the products in cigarette will go to your lungs easily, they started putting filter over there. Very good. Good idea. But when they put a filter over there, the smoke can still go through the filter, goes to your lung. If it doesn't go to your lung, you can't get the effect of nicotine, you know, isn't it? So the filter will block some big particles in the cigarette, yes, but a small particle will still go to your lungs. When a small body goes to your lungs after the filter, they go to the very far area of the lungs. They call the periphery of the lungs. So now they found that they got lung cancer in the periphery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last time you got lung cancer near the heart and near the vessels. Because mm -hmm. there's smoke on the filter. Okay. And the big, big particle goes to your lung directly. Now, because they get filter, the small particle goes to your lungs, they go very far to your lungs towards the end. The cancer towards the end of the lung, they're going to periphery. They call it carcinoma. So, whatever thing you do, you still get a cancer. Okay, that's that a very straightforward answer. Yeah, <laughs> filter or no filter, cancer is possible. Yeah, you still get cancer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two more. This is the second yeah. last one. Sure. Uh, what do you think about e cigarettes? Okay. There's something very, very frightening. It's very frightening. I tell you why it's frightening because this is targeting young people. E cigarette is something glamorous. Just like the olden days people smoke because of glamour, the e cigarette is now getting glamorous. You can buy the special e cigarette thing, looks very sexy to you and everything, and show off to your friend. I got these things in there. So, again, e cigarettes is not proven to be effective to quit smoking. Many people say that I'm using e cigarette to quit smoking. Many studies have shown that e-cigarette does not make you quit smoking in a bigger number compared to other ways of quit smoking. So there are a lot of things available in the market and a lot of things available in the, in the, in the on online everything. They all are targeting younger people to go for e-cigarette. They yeah. say that if they've got no tar, got no other compound in the cigarette except nicotine, it can prevent every other disease in your body. But then again, when they got e-cigarette, the solution there the solution there, they got lots of chemicals and they put lots of flavors. And all those flavors and chemicals mm -hmm. will cause other forms of disease to your body. Yes. So nothing, I only tell my patients, I only tell my friends that your lungs, if you are a, you are a Christian, you are a Buddhist, you are a Hindu, you are a Muslim, every religion says that you must not do something to harm your body. Okay? And they always say that whatever the God creates to your body, the lungs is only to bring in the oxygen. Your lungs secreted by your God is to bring in oxygen to your body. Nothing else. Nothing else. Not sisha, not e-cigarette, not HTP, not what they call uh, tobacco, not churu, not what they call uh, whatever it is. Okay. 
nothing should go to your lung except the oxygen. Uh, That's all. Yes. That's all. Okay, final one is from uh, Rosna. Z I think it's this Prof. Rosna, right? Yeah, Prof. Rosna, yes. Hi, my name is Prof. Rosna. Yes. Um, yeah. Are there any data in our Malaysian COVID indicators that heavy smokers are? Okay, good. I was hoping that you would not ask me a Prof. Okay? Like I say, in Malaysia, we do have a figure, uh, but not released yet. But many figures outside Malaysia show that about 30% of people who are smokers got a chance to get COVID. 30%. Okay, so it, it is a big figure. Huh? So this now Malaysian figure is not released yet. I can't tell you right now. Huh? So about 30% of people outside Malaysia, they found that they got a high risk to get COVID mortality and disease if you're a smoker. I mean, it's very obvious. It's very obvious. Like I mentioned just now, smoking damages your lung. Smoking decreases your immunity. So if you're an older person with damaged lung, damaged immunity, the chance of getting COVID-19 and damage your, your body is definitely much higher. It's definitely higher of a normal person. Okay? Good. We have a last one. So I, I see there's another comment that came. Oh, Prof. Rosna says thank you. <laughs> thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say? Anyone comment down below for your comments and questions? Oh, shall we? I think we can end our show for today. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you. I must, I must thank, uh, I must thank both of you for sharing this morning meeting. I must really thank Masa again. Uh, I think it is very important that I hope I got my students listening to me, and I hope that there are many students and other faculty listening to this uh, webinar. And they, they, if they are smoking, please stop smoking. If you do not smoke, it's good. If a friend should smoke, please tell them to stop as soon as possible. I only tell them that if you are if you are a student, if you smoke, you don't smoke a lot, you know. You okay, don't have much money. So you yeah. to smoke only about 10 cigarettes a day or maybe five a day. So those who smoke less than 10 cigarettes a day, it's easy for them to stop smoking. The addiction is not so bad yet, you know. So you can actually start smoking easily. You smoke less than 10 a day. So students, please don't pick up the habit of smoking. If you do smoke, please try to stop it. Uh, go for games, go for activity, go with your friends, don't smoke it. You must have friends, don't smoke. Don't go to friends who smoke, please. Huh? So and then uh, have a healthy lifestyle, that's very important. Thank yes. you very much. OK, thank you, Prof, for your time and uh, sure. for being here with us. Uh, on this special uh, day of World No Tobacco Day. And sure. uh, thank you, Tan, for yes, making the you. Thank you, thank you. On board. Uh, Masa would like to also say thank you to you for making it a um, uh, wonderful uh, event. And we hope that everybody takes home the message that you've given. And to our viewers, please share this post to your friends, to your family, and uh, spread the message as part of uh, celebrating day this today okay stay safe stay healthy everyone thank, thank you, you very much thank you thank, thank you so much. much thank you so much Dato. thank you bye bye thank you Mr. bye bye, bye. bye.